What's up guys, this is Demkeys and today I'm going to teach you how to add click, move and drop functionality to any game object in your scene. So let's begin. First of all, click game object, 3D object, cube. This is going to be our ground. So rename this to ground and change the scale to 100 on the x-axis, 0.1 on the y-axis and 100 on the z-axis. Also change the position to 0 on all axes. Make a duplicate of this ground object and place it to the side. Next we need to add two layers to our project. First of all movable object and next ground. You can add these in any order that you want that's fine. Then select both of the ground game objects and set their layer property to ground. Next click game object 3d object cube. Rename this object to movable object and set its layer property to movable object then add a rigid body component to it. Next, in the project panel, create a material. Call this MO Matte. This is going to be a material for our movable object. Change its color to red. You can set it to whatever color you want. And then drag and drop it onto the movable object, either in the scene or in the hierarchy. Drag and drop the movable object into the project panel to make it a prefab. And then, using snapping, take the cube close to the ground and then raise it up a little bit. Then make a few duplicates of the cube. Next. Create an empty game object, rename this to scripts, add a new script to this, call it click move drop script 06 and open up the script in mono develop. Alright, so we're going to start by adding a couple of empty functions. Type void find and grab movable object. Next, void find ground below movable object. Next, void trace mouse position relative to ground. Next, void drop movable object. Now we are going to create some of our variables. Public bool movable object grabbed. Next, ray, mo ray. Next, public transform, mo transform. Next, public layer mask, what is movable object. Next, ray cast hit, mo hit. Then in the start method, type mo hit equals new ray cast hit. Then in the update method type mo ray equals camera dot main dot screen point to ray input dot mouse position. Now in the find and grab movable object function type if physics dot raycast. The first parameter is mo ray. The next parameter should be the out variable. So type out mo hit. The next parameter is the distance. So that's mathf dot infinity. And finally the layer that this raycast should be looking for. That is what is movable object. So if this returns true, then mo transform should be mo hit dot transform. Next, mo transform dot get component rigid body dot is kinematic equals true. We are basically setting the is kinematic property of the rigid body to true. Next, we want to call find ground below movable object. Now before we continue with this function we need to create the variables that we are going to use in this function those variables are public layer mask what is ground public transform ground and raycast hit ground hit now in find ground below movable object type if physics dot raycast and this time we want to cast a ray from mo transform dot position and we want to cast it towards vector 3 dot down the out variable should be ground hit the distance should be mathf dot infinity and the layer mask should be what is ground. Now if this returns true, then ground should be ground hit dot transform. Now let's go into our update method. Type if input dot get mouse button down zero. That's the left mouse button. Then call find and grab movable object. And next type movable object grabbed equals mo transform not equals null. So movable object grabbed will be true if mo transform is not null and it will be false if it is null. Next type if movable object grabbed then trace mouse position. I know this all looks like a mess right now but I'll explain the entire thing once we are done. Now before we enter any code into the trace mouse position relative to ground function we need to create the variables. Type public transform mouse position marker raycast hit mouse position hit public float mo y offset from ground public float mouse position y offset from ground and finally public vector 3 mouse position relative to ground now in trace mouse position relative to ground type if physics dot raycast 
we want to use the same ray that we created earlier so that's mo ray we want the out variable to be mouse position hit the distance should be mathf.infinity and the ray cast should be looking for what is ground if this returns true mouse position relative to ground equals mouse position hit dot point next mo transform dot position equals new vector 3 and the new position should be mouse position relative to ground dot x mouse position relative to ground dot y plus moy offset from ground and mouse position relative to ground dot z next we need to set the position for our mouse position marker so mouse position marker dot position equals new vector 3 and the new position here will be the same as this so just copy and paste it but over here change moy offset from ground to mouse position y offset from ground something I forgot to do earlier ground hit equals new raycast hit and mouse position marker dot game object dot set active should be false next drop movable object this is really simple if mo dot transform not equals null then mo transform dot get component rigid body dot is kinematic equals false then mo transform equals null and ground equals null next go into the update method and below where we set the value for mobile object grabbed type mouse position marker dot game object dot set active and in the bracket type movable object grabbed then below this if statement which is checking for get mouse button down type if input dot get mouse button up again we are looking for zero then drop movable object here's how the entire thing works now in the start method we are initializing mo hit and ground hit and we are basically disabling the mouse position marker object then in the update method we are first setting the value for mo ray and that value is whatever is returned by screen point array this function basically returns a ray going from the camera through a screen point and this is that point which is whatever our mouse position is next we are checking if the player has pressed the left mouse button and if the player has then find and grab movable object is called in the find and grab movable object function we have an if condition which is basically a ray cast and the ray cast is using mo ray which we created earlier and the result of the ray cast which is a ray cast hit if it does actually hit something is stored in mo hit and the ray cast does not have a limit which is why we set the max distance to mathf.infinity and the raycast is supposed to look for a movable object now if the raycast does actually hit something then the value of mo transform will be mo hit dot transform basically whatever the raycast has hit and bear in mind the raycast will not hit any object in the scene it's only going to hit whatever object is part of the layer that is specified in this layer mask and we'll be setting this value from the inspector next we want to get the rigid body component of mo.transform and set is kinematic to true i'll explain the reason for this while actually demonstrating the click move and drop mechanism next we call find ground below movable object because now the movable object has been found so we want to find ground below it even here we have an if condition within which there's a ray cast the ray is being cast from mo transform dot position in vector 3 dot down direction and the result of the ray cast if it should hit something uh, should be stored in ground hit the max distance is mathf dot infinity and this ray cast should only look for objects that belong to the layer specified by this layer mask if this does return true then ground will be equal to ground hit dot transform now let's go back to the update method let's forget about this for now and move forward we are setting the value of movable object grabbed based on whether mo transform is null or not so basically if mo transform is null that means no object has been grabbed and so movable object will be false but if mo transform is not null that means it does contain something meaning an object has been grabbed so movable object grabbed should be true and then we want to enable or disable our mouse position marker game object based on movable object grabs value i'll explain what the mouse position marker does while i'm demonstrating the click move and drop mechanism next if movable object has been grabbed then we want to trace mouse position relative to ground and that is this function right here again over here there's an if condition within that there's a ray cast the ray cast is using mo ray as the ray and the result if the ray cast should actually find something will be stored in 
mouse position hit. The max distance is mathf.infinity. And the raycast is supposed to look for objects that belong to whatever layer is specified by what is ground. Now, if this returns true, mouse position relative to ground, which is a vector 3, should be equal to mouse position hit dot point. Mouse position hit dot point is the exact point in world space where the raycast hit the collider. So this is going to be very useful for us when we are trying to move the object around in the scene. Next, we set the position of MO transform to whatever the position of mouse position relative to ground is. Only in the case of mouse position relative to ground dot Y, we add MOY offset from ground. This is what actually lifts the object up in the air for the duration that the object is being grabbed. And just like MO transform, we want to set the position for mouse position marker as well. Again, the same thing, but in this case, mouse position relative to ground dot Y has mouse position Y offset from ground added to it. The point of doing this is basically to keep the mouse position marker a little bit above the ground because otherwise it's it's just going to be within the ground and you're not going to be able to see a mouse position marker. Finally, if input dot get mouse button up, again, the left mouse button, then drop movable object. This is a really simple function. We first check if MO transform is not null. If it is not null, then we look for the rigid body 2D component and set its is kinematic property to false. Next, we set MO transform to null and finally we set ground to null. I hope I didn't miss anything. Hit save, go back to Unity and we are gonna enter the values for some of our variables over here. Set what is movable object to movable object what is ground to ground. Movable object grabbed will be set by the code. MO transform will be set by the code. Ground will be set by the code. Mouse position marker is something we need to create right now. So click game object, 3D object, cylinder. Change the scale on the Y axis to 0.1. Remove the capsule collider and you can rename this object if you want. Also, just so that this object is distinguishable, create a material, call it mouse position mat and set its color to blue or any other color that's distinguishable to you and drag and drop that material onto the mouse position marker object. Now set this object aside and in the scripts game object drag and drop mouse position marker to the mouse position marker field. Now, MOY offset from ground. This is the Y offset of our movable object, so this should be 4. We want it to be 4 units off the ground, and mouse position Y can be 0.1. Finally, before running the game, get into whatever angle you want the camera to look at the objects from, and select the camera, and hit Control shift f This is a shortcut for align to view. Okay, so I realized this a little late. Instead of setting what is ground to ground, I set it to movable object. So I'm going to first click nothing, so nothing is selected and then click ground. Now hit play and now when you click on any of these objects first of all you'll notice the object has been lifted four units off the ground but you'll also notice that the mouse position marker has been enabled and also repositioned so that it is wherever your mouse cursor is or wherever your mouse position is. One more thing you'll notice is that the mouse position marker and our movable object always move relative to the ground. Wherever your mouse moves these objects move relative to the ground. The mouse position marker is not important. I've just created it so that you can trace the position of your movable object because the movable object is up in the air so you need something on the ground so that you'll know exactly where your object is going to land. Now the reason why I set rigidbody.iskinematic to true is because for example if I drop this object here and the object has rotated so now it's at a slight angle. Its rotation has changed. So now when I click on the object, you'll notice it captures the object as it is. The object is not rotating anymore. But if is kinematic was set to false, then the object would still keep rotating. You can mess around with this, stack them on top of each other. You can add as many movable objects as you want. Basically, you just need to drag and drop this prefab onto the scene. And if you want to make any other game object in your scene a movable object, for example, we are going to create this sphere. All you need to do is set its layer to movable object and make sure that it has a rigid body on it. Hit play and now you can even move the sphere. Now this method is not necessarily the only method that you can use to create click move and drop functionality and it's not bug free at all. It may very well have its bugs but it's definitely something to get you started. So yeah, that's it. Alright guys, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. There's a lot more where that came from. If you would like to check out my previous tutorial, which is shown in the left side of the screen, the link's in the description down below. And if you would like to check out the APV1 development vlogs, which is shown in the right side of the screen, the link's in the top right corner and in the description down below. I'm also accepting donations. So if you'd like to help me out, you can send your donations to my PayPal email address, which is mentioned on the screen and in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.